It's a battle of registration that has taken over nine months and its full debate is coming in in the month of April 2016. It's the Atheists in Kenya Association, the drama that is following it, why and what's not being understood. That's what we're discussing right here on the Newsroom Agenda. It's the Newsroom Agenda, all the right questions. Like you already know, you're watching the Newsroom Agenda and we're glad you are. Our social media platforms are open. On Twitter, get us at this man of Buya, capital T, capital M, capital O, at KTS Kenya, at Harrison Mumia, at Nasi Wangare. The president of the Atheist in Kenya is right here with us to make matters even clearer amidst all the debate that has been going on. Mr. Harrison Mumia. Thank you so much for joining the program. Thank you for inviting me to KTS. <laughs> you're welcome. Liz Mangare, you're welcome too. This is the first time you are appearing on a media interview? Uh, no, not really. I've been, um, we were with Harrison. Some time back. Some time back. I think it was earlier around this year. Yeah, we, we were on, uh, K, uh, on NTV. Yeah, oh. AM Live. AM Live in the morning. Oh. Sometime early this year. All oh, right. Yeah. So let's start it from uh, this rational point of view. Maybe a lot is fast. Liz, when did you realize that you were becoming an atheist? If I get your reaction about what people are saying out here about your association. Mm -hmm. um, well, for me, it's just been a question of um, having a lot of, you know, gaps with regards to how I was um, oriented into the whole concept of a deity. From my childhood, um, I was brought up from, in a Christian family. Um, and uh, to me, Christianity was supposed to be the blueprint or rather the platform for which uh, you know what is right from what is wrong, what is ex acceptable from what is not acceptable. Um, going on, growing up, even as a kid, when I was read for the Bible and some of the stories, um, it was hard to make sense. For example, the story of Exodus, where you have um, Moses going to get the people of Israel from captivity. Then um, you have this God, because he's all powerful, he can easily just get these people out. But what does he do? He puts the Egyptians, likely even those who were innocent, who didn't have anything to do with the king's agenda of enslaving the Israelites, he put them through this place, eventually ends up killing their kids. And I remember asking, uh, what is up with this scenario? If this God is everything positive people are usually talking about, what's wrong with that scenario? And when I would raise, there's so many things that never used to add up for me. But whenever I would raise questions, the responses I used to get was, God is almighty. You should not question God. Do not question God. In fact, I'm referred to another, to another Bible verse that talks about um, if you question God. Psalms 14.1. 14 <laughs> Psalms we have actually, we now know what it says. <laughs> <laughs> right? So it's just a question of inquiry. Up until when now I was an adult, and um, then uh, when I came across people who actually were like me, questioning and a lot of things that never used to add up, plus doing a lot of reading and research, then I mean I realized there's actually nothing wrong with me. My whole um, looking at life without the belief in a deity, I mean there's nothing wrong about it. And from 2013 I'd say it's when I became a bit vocal about my stance. When, when, where were you that time? Where was I? Yeah, in 2013, uh, when you were really officially declaring yourself an atheist. Well, um, I don't know how to answer that. I don't know what exactly you're looking for. But, I mean, just going about my kawaida business, you know, just living my life like every other adult. <laughs> that's a good No, that's a good one. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> well, that's a good background to this program. Now, Mr. Mumia, if uh, there's something I'm not getting clearly, and uh, I, th I, I thought I knew it until I was confused even more, especially with some of the interviews you've been having on different media platforms. Let me get to know what is 
what is this you call atheism? Yeah, be before are you an atheist? <coughs> are you an antichrist? I, what exactly are you? Let's start by knowing what yeah, is yeah. Be Before I go to that, I also want to just give a background of how I became an atheist, because it's also very important. Okay. And, uh, you know, it turns out that from the time I was a small boy, and I remember how I used to feel about going to church. I, I never liked going to church. I mean, I, I used to uh, relate to a God because I was small and we were taught God in, high, in uh, Sunday school and of course my mom used to be an avid uh, re reader of the Bible. My mom used to pray before meals and uh, of course... Let, let, let me just cut you short uh, at that. Uh, did she pass or she stopped praying after a meal? No, she's still, she's, still, she's still very prayerful. Oh. Even today I can tell you she's praying for me. It turns out the entire country is praying for me. <laughs> so, um, um, you know, the, the, the power of prayer is something I'm waiting to see. Uh, and I can tell you nothing is going to change about me. Uh, but when I was young, I, I, I used to go through the, the motions of youth, a youthful person growing up in a, a religious uh, family, you know. And you can, you can understand what normally happens. Your mom wants you to pray before you, you go to, uh, before you have a meal. You have to pray before you sleep. You sleep. <laughs> we used to be uh, anointed, now literally with oil. I mean, I, I don't know why that was happening, but uh, I guess I used to feel like after that is done, I'll have a sleep without <laughs> any... <laughs> devilish thing going on at night. Although I remember one time I had a nightmare, I mean, despite the, mm -hmm. the anointing. Um, so, so, you can imagine at the age of six, seven, eight, nine, ten, you have to be forced to go to church, including if, if uh, it turned out that my mom was not around, he used to delegate the duty of somebody, our neighbors, uh, family, us going to church with them. So it was something which I sort of had to do. And you know, getting to church, then there was that program, you know, you have to sit, stand, sing, talk in tongues. And the talking in tongues <laughs> bit, and the talking in tongues bit was interesting. Because you see, what I used to observe, I'm in church, yes, everybody is dramatically speaking uh, different you know, dialects and languages, basically mumbling. And here I am, I'm asking myself, what's, what's going on in this church? Um, and I'm asking myself, why can't I do it? You know, what's going on? All right, so me, my skepticism about religion started when I was very young. But then the one fundamental issue I was grappling with, even at the age of 10 years, was the idea that there is a heaven and then there's a hell, mm -hmm. and, uh, and there's judgment day. Mm -hmm. So what is, what's going to happen? I have this family I love so much. There's my mom, my dad, my brothers. And we are all living in the same house. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and I'm today, thinking on judgment day, we're going to be split. Just before you continue, <laughs> any of them atheists today apart from yourself? No, I'm the only atheist in my family. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and it turns out I'm the president of Atheism Kenya, so you can imagine what's probably going on uh, in terms of my mom, my dad, and everything. But we'll talk about that. So what I'm trying to say is, what really, what, what bothered me and scared me really uh, was the, the idea that in heaven we might not be together. That the judgment day will split my family into pieces. And worst, worst, worst of that was that... Uh, that some of the people I love so much would be in hell. Uh, suppose I'm in heaven. But also the other disturbing thing was that suppose I would I go to hell, then uh, my other siblings and probably my mom, because I think my dad will also be in hell. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I mean, the idea that we'll be looking at each other from those two perspectives was just not acceptable for me. It was so unfair. You know, and the one thing which I would have told God if uh, I still believed in that was for us to all be in one place so that uh, we don't lose that unity. So, 
you can, what I'm trying to say is that my 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 the whole story of religion and how it, I was um, inculcated into it it left me with a lot of dissonance a lot of questions and issues and of course the issue of sin because we were told cheating was a sin stealing was a sin so it's like every other time I have to look at what have I done you know I was told that Jesus writes I mean there's a book of life eh? this whole book of life thing eh? it really bothered me because you wonder are you in the book of life has your name been deleted from the book of life do you need to ask for forgiveness for your name to go back to the book of life it's ridiculous. Yeah. So you know you're grappling with all these questions because on one hand you want to get on to heaven, <laughs> you just got and saved because uh, you went to church and some pastor told you to mama some 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 <laughs> words of getting saved, three minutes, and now your name is a book of life. <laughs> the <laughs> next tomorrow tomorrow, tomorrow you've done some you, like okay I, I mean I'm, I have to confess there was a time I wanted to buy some chocolate for some girl I really liked in the estate. So I had to grab some 100 shillings from my mom's uh, pass. <laughs> Stealing. That's and, not and the Bible saying. says, you should not steal. <laughs> my name obviously was deleted from the book of life. <laughs> now I'm like, so what do I do? Now I'm thinking the next Sunday, let me go and now get my name back <laughs> to, the to the book of life. So you know the whole forgiveness story. Now this, this, this whole thing, it, it was a very difficult life to live. It was very, very difficult. I mean, trying to, trying to align yourself to uh, an acceptable way of uh, Christianity so that you go to heaven. So full of fear, first you denied your freedom, you don't know what's coming and uh, what's going, you know. This, this was really for me the beginning of my skepticism. It started when I was very young. And my experience in uh, the family setup, that's where the whole thing started. And then I'll tell you something. In high school, there was this girl, I mean, you know boys, you know, in, you know the life in high let, school. Let, let, me, let me come back to you on that because already the type of comments, I'm already, I will, I will be criticized for allowing you talk too much on that. <laughs> let me come to you, Liz. Mm -hmm. Now tell me how your family takes the whole of this issue or is are there, or rather is your family an uh, atheism type of, or are you the only one? And how are they taking it all together? Mm -hmm. Well, um, the first time I remember when I sprang this out to my family, and it was, of course, um, every one of them, every member took it differently. Um, shock, which is understandable. Um, for the parents, because the actual, the reverence, <laughs> Ordained, ordained reverence, yes. So, of course, the question is, where did we go wrong? Um, have we not been praying hard enough? Okay, I mean, a lot of those kinds of things. And there were interventions, a lot of those. Huh? And it's, uh, you know, and the kind of interventions was more of trying to, you know, it's not about... It's not about religion, it's about relationship. Christianity is relationship. Your relationship with your maker, you know, those kinds of things. Trying, and I think it's just a question of them trying to make sense. How can you not believe? Um, I, I must say over the years, um, well, with my siblings especially, for them, they've sort of stopped trying to intervene or trying to make me become a certain way or go back convert to Christianity, uh, but uh, like Harrison, um, there's always prayers and fasting, you know, and there's a hope that whatever is blinding me, that veil will be torn or that, you know, and I will <laughs> go back to believing, but yeah, that's uh, basically what's been happening since I came out. You no longer receive phone calls from home? Well, um, we, the relationship is still there. We communicate. We still relate as a family. Even with the extended family, we still relate. In fact, um, I would say a majority of my, my support has been mostly from my extended family, some, some of my uncles, who are very liberal in thinking. Uh, for them, they are well read. So to them, whether someone believes or doesn't believe is really a non-issue. As long as for you, you have a right at your stance, 
by you doing your own introspection or by you know just examining yourself they have no issue and as long as you're living your life respectfully abiding by the law to them really that's a non-issue so a lot of support from them okay yeah so you our family is actually supporting your stand as an atheist some of them yes some of them let's come back to the story <laughs> Let's come back to this high school story of yours. Yeah, yes, I, I really wanted to say this because uh, this has to be said. That uh, I, I was a boy and, you know, a teenager in high school and, you know, we have all this... I schooled at Aquinas High School, so we have all this... Uh, I'm playing basketball, which I still do. And, uh, you know, there are these exchange... I was in a boy's school, so there are these exchange, uh, you know, girls have come to your school and, you know, you're trying to... Famously known as funky. <laughs> yeah, you could say that. <laughs> so they have come and uh, you have this identified this girl who you want to kind of date. Uh, sure. The usual stuff that happens. Now this girl then decides, you know, eventually we got to talking and uh, uh, and I was excited. I went and told my dad, you know, there's this girl I, 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 I like. And... Um, I, I, we meet with the girl after the games and we then arrange to meet some other day, right? Um, so I was just behaving the normal high school dude. Then this girl tells me, you have to come and see my pastor. Uh, and this pastor was uh, one of these famous pastors, you know, Pentecostal pastors. And you're still in high school? I'm still in high school. And she's like, no, you and have so to come and see my see pastor. pastor. Yeah, you have to see my pastor. Why? so that he validates whatever we are doing and uh, well of course I was in, in love, that high school love eh? so I'm like okay I'm going to do this <laughs> I'm going to do this and I go and see the pastor and the pastor actually castigates me for spoiling girls who are uh, the good girls of the church. I'm one of those people who has been spoiling girls of the church. Now, th that really got me off so badly um, <laughs> that I'm being judged for being me and for liking somebody else by a church leader. That one was, I found that too harsh. And uh, to me, that was, uh, I started seeing how religion uh, tries to make normal life look bad make normal things look terrible uh, put limits where really you should allow people to you know we were not going to have sex or something like that obviously i mean i was just being a, a high school boy and you you know i think that was just something normal now um even for the girl to take me to the church tells you that we have a situation here where the church wants to control uh, society and make itself the moral, um, the, the, the moral big brother of society, which is something I rejected from that time. I told myself the church cannot be the one to define morality for society. So that was like another turning point in my, uh, my journey towards atheism, a huge turning point. And I remember that because uh, um, I would not like, I did not like the idea that uh, the church was supposed to define how my life was supposed to be. But I think from that point I became very rebellious. So now, of course, that and other experiences in high school come to campus. Then I'm this. I got an A, and so I'm this. Uh, I studied computer science, and of course with my curiosity about religion, because it had already been uh, triggered. So uh, then I started doing now my research, which was very, very uh, important in giving me enough information to now arrive at the decision that really, there are really no deities. Mine is not even a question of whether they are there or not. I'm not in the middle. I am clear that deities are just ideas that uh, people came up with and some of them became more popular than others. Christianity is just a popular idea. Mm -hmm. Islam is also another just popular idea that people have well marketed, of course, well 
communicated. The channels are trying to make people feel like it is important to belong to those specific religions. Um, so my research also went into the issues of origin of life. Because it's a critical... Let's that origin of, uh, of life in a short while. You're watching the Newsroom Agenda right here on KTS. At this moment, we are at Harrison Mumia at Nas Wangare. Those are our social media platforms. The hashtag, without God, that's what you can always interact to now. So we take a short break. When we come back, we get to this origin of life notion according to Harrison. Kwa vibawa vikali vya ndani na inje ya East Africa Kila juma mwosi kwa za saa nne adi saa tano onusu Ikiletwa kwenu na iyo countdown MC Art presenter Ali mtoto wa mjini Yani ndo habari ya mjini Welcome back to watching the newsroom agenda. All the right questions and all the deserved answers. You are joining the conversation on atheists in Kenya. What is the notion? What is the concept? What are the misconceptions? And what exactly is not being understood? Harrison Mumia, the president of atheists in Kenya, and also we're being joined by Liz Wangari from the same association. Liz is actually the secretary of atheists in Kenya at, the, at the moment. Yeah. Oh, the secretary of Atheist in Kenya is right here. Some you were not have you were, you had not received uh, official communication from uh, from the from the government on whether your registration has been suspended. Have you received that yet? No, no, no. We have not received any communication from the office of the registrar. So, um, so as far as we are concerned, as I've kept saying, we are a registered society. We are also the first atheist registered society in Kenya, and I think uh, across Africa we really are the first. I, mean, I don't know whether there's any other atheist registered society. I know they are humanists, and probably free thinker societies, but a, a, an atheist society, this is the first one. Now, let me go straight to my first question in this second segment, uh, because we have less than 10 minutes for this. Now, you tell me atheism, satanism, and all these are the things that keep coming up. Is your association involved in all these? Is it part of one? What exactly is your association? I don't know. Liz, you know Liz has been labeled a satanist, so maybe she wants to say something about it. Yeah, because maybe someone um, may not be wrong. Maybe someone may not be wrong. Is this satanism or what exactly is it? Because people make decisions according to what they are fed or according to what they know. Mm -hmm. So maybe to distinguish that, is this, some, is this some bit of satanism or what exactly are you people? And I believe Harrison will expand on this a bit more. But the first thing uh, people need to know is that atheism is a lack of belief in a deity. So, deity, deity by definition is a supreme being, a higher being. So, by virtue of taking an atheistic stance, you do not believe in any supernatural being. That includes the antagonist, because for Christian, the antagonist is the devil, Satan. So, by virtue of being an atheist, I do not believe that. And perhaps, I don't know, Harrison, if you can remember this, a whole religion on satanism, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't remember who their father is. And basically, it's just 
a, a, um, a religion that was start, started to counter Christianity for the person who began it. Yeah. So the holes with Christianity, you know, you call the devil the bad person, but really, you human beings are the vilest of people. Uh -huh, so he uh -huh. started a whole religion, we called it Satanism, but basically it's, it drives or it thrives on humanistic kind of principles, uh -huh. but basically just goes, I mean, it <laughs> just antagonizes so everything that Christians say. So you say Satan is bad, um, no hate Satan, <laughs> you know, but then we live peacefully, we live in harmony, you know, do good to your fellow man, yeah. but our our deity is the devil, is Satan. Our deity is yes, Satan. Yes. But you see, by virtue of being an atheist, I don't believe in neither of those two. So, <laughs> so you are saying that uh, yours is not Satanism? It's not Satanism. It's just a lack of belief in deity and supernatural beings or supernatural realms and all that that pertains to anything to do with uh, religion or deity. Yeah, I think, I think, yeah, let me just expound on that and say that uh, we have to understand what a deity is. Human beings over the years uh, have tried to explain how the world works. And I think from the time before we even became civilized, I'm sure we, we were having a lot of uh, difficulty understanding why lightning happens. Why, uh, uh, why we have so much you know, different kinds of species of animals, uh, why darkness and light happens. You know, you can imagine about uh, maybe a thousand or two thousand years ago, mm -hmm. the scientific progress we've made today was really not there. Mm -hmm. It's just until at the, about the, 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 the 19th century, mm -hmm. when Galileo Galilei was able to uh, give us a clue about uh, the relationship between the earth and the sun, for example. And it's just uh, uh, this year, uh, in the 1930s, when uh, one of, uh, again, the famous scientists, uh, a German um, who came up with this theory of relativity, uh, what was his name? I was just watching his video the other time. Mm -hmm. what, what I'm trying to say really is that uh, this is a bit like polio. We didn't know what, what, what makes polio uh, kill children. But people used to die and people were thinking maybe we've done something wrong to the gods. So you can understand why people invented deities. It is to try and make, understand the world, give meaning to the world for things they did not know. We reject today the idea that they are deities and that is what an atheist is. Somebody who uh, has uh, the position that really there are no deities. An understanding of how these deities came about is very important in trying to arrive at the conclusion that there are no deities. So, a Christian, a Muslim, they, also, they are still holding on to their deities because they want to uh, explain things through the deities. You saw what happened in Huruma, uh, that uh, even today there's a pregnant uh, woman who is reported to have gotten out of the rubble alive. There was another child who uh, just I think two days ago was found alive after spending 20 hours in the rubble in the Huruma tragedy and you go to the social media you'll see Christians coming and saying God is great this is one of the miracles of God again they are behaving like people who lived uh, uh, thousands of years ago who didn't understand uh, biology as it works I've explained in, on my social media uh, Facebook page that uh, the biological faculties of this, these people are the ones which allowed them to survive for that period of time. Extend that period by two weeks, three weeks, they would not you know, exist because of lack of food and so on and so forth. And it turns out that there are some rabbits which were also found alive. Um, and, and, and so there's another issue of rationality here. The people who died, so you cannot say that uh, the ones who were found alive, it was an act of God. So you'd also start arguing, why did God allow rabbits to be alive instead of the human beings who died? So the point is that uh, we have reached a stage in our progression as humanity where we can discard deities. They, they no longer make sense to us. Science has made too much progress. The Hubble telescope, which trapassed uh, the, the solar system, you know, it took a photograph of the Earth from very far, just before it uh, 
moved away from the, the, the solar system. And you could see the Earth being a very small, minute planet. If you look at that photo carefully, you start realizing that we are so insignificant as an Earth in the scope of the universe. We are so insignificant that um, to think that there's a deity who is so concerned about this small uh, Earth of ours and the, the, the little human beings on that Earth is, is becoming difficult uh, for any rational person who has that kind of knowledge that we have. Well, thank you, Valson. I'm told that this program has just come to an end because our, our time is up. But we want to continue with this discussion and just let me get to know you as atheists. What do you think is uh, uh, the source of life? What do you think then we came from? Are you not afraid of, of death? And uh, if indeed God really, really exists, do you, uh, or rather, are you ready to go under uh, that which Christians and many other religions will call a loss for that matter but thank you so much for joining we will be coming back for this episode again you can catch it uh, next week on saturday but meanwhile thank you hudson for joining the program thank you it's thank you pleasure very much. hosting thank you, you, thank you. Uh, today you've been watching the newsroom agenda thank you so much our social media platforms still remain the same at this matter we at kts kenya at harrison mumia at nas wangare Thank you for joining the Newsroom Agenda where we ask all the right questions for all the answers that are deserved. Have a good night.